This is the new Ford GT. It is the single most highly anticipated car this year. Although Ford hasn't announced pricing yet, it's rumored that well-optioned versions will likely cost around a half million dollars. And today I'm going to show you why it's worth every penny. I've flown all the way to Tooele, Utah to borrow this Ford GT from Ford at the Ford GT press launch. Today I'm going to show you all of its interesting features and cool details and awesome new technology, and then I'm going to take it out on the road and show you how it drives. And of course, for more of my thoughts on the Ford GT experience, click the link below for my column on autotrader.com slash oversteer. Oh, and by the way, this isn't the only thing I've done with the new Ford GT. I've also made a video thoroughly comparing the new Ford GT and the old Ford GT, which will be out very shortly shortly on my channel, so keep checking back. Before I get into all the cool stuff, a little overview. The new Ford GT is built in Canada and it uses just a V6. It's the same engine block from the Ford F-150 and the Raptor, but it makes 647 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque. And this car will do 216 miles per hour and 0-60 to 60 in 3.2 seconds. The GT uses a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission and Ford says they're only going to build a thousand of these for the entire world. We'll start with the doors. Now the old Ford GT had those crazy doors with the roofs on them that was annoying. Here's how you get in the new Ford GT. You press this little thing, the door pops up, and then you're in. Now on the inside of the door you'll notice a couple of cool features. For example, here is the button to release the doors once you're inside. Also you'll notice there are two climate control vents on each door, and the door pull doesn't go all the way up, but it's a very sturdy piece. So when you get inside, you pull the door closed by grabbing this thing and pulling it down. Now when you get in the car, there are a million cool features and quirks. I'm going to start with possibly the coolest, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is an unbelievably complex piece of equipment with 18 different buttons and two dials. So let's check them all out. This one controls the windshield washer spray. This one turns on the turn signal and turns it back off again. Down here are the Bluetooth or the voice controls. This is the stereo volume, and interestingly, it's the only stereo volume control on the entire car. There isn't a knob on the stereo itself. I'm serious. On the left, these buttons change the stereo track. Above that is the cruise control, the left turn signal button, and the button that lets you flash your high beams. As for the two dials, the one on the left controls your drive mode, and each drive mode completely reconfigures the fully digital gauge cluster. Put it in N for normal mode, and you're probably on the road, so the speedometer is in the middle with the tack above it. It's the same story when you switch to W for wet mode, which is what you choose if it's raining out, but put it in S for sport mode, and you're more interested in what gear you're in than the speed, so the gear moves to the front and center. Next up is T for track mode, and then the tack gets much bigger and your speedometer is banished to the top left corner because your speed doesn't really matter as much on the track. Finally, there's V for VMAX mode when you're trying to reach the car's top speed. Switch into that and your speed moves back to the center again. On the right, the other dial controls the windshield wipers, which is simple enough to understand. One more cool steering wheel feature, when you put the Ford GT in manual shifting mode, this happens. Now one of the reasons the steering wheel has so many functions is because the seats don't move. I'll get to that more in a second. The thinking was that they wanted to put as many things on the steering wheel as possible. The steering wheel does move so that if you're a shorter driver, if you're further away from the center console, you wouldn't have to be reaching over there in case you couldn't reach it. Yes, that's right. The seats don't move. They're fixed in place in order to save weight. Now you can move the backrest with a little lever located down here, but the seats themselves are fixed. They don't move. This has resulted in some interesting decisions, one of which is the steering wheel Another is the mirrors. Take a look at the driver mirror and notice where it's positioned on the door, almost as far forward as possible. Now check out the passenger mirror. It's a few inches further back to provide maximum visibility for the driver sitting in a fixed position on the left side of the car. Speaking of the seats, let's talk seat belts. This car has a racing harness, but Ford can't sell it like that. The government would get mad and call it a race car. So these are aftermarket harnesses from Sparco you can get in the Ford Performance catalog. The funny thing is, this car also has a normal normal seat belt. But the best part is that Ford knows what buyers are going to do with this car, so every Ford GT comes ready with mounting points for a racing harness. 
Another thing you'll notice when you get inside the car is just how narrow the interior is. You're almost shoulder to shoulder with the person next to you, like you're in a Lotus Elise or some other small car. There's barely room for a bunch of switches in the middle. And so there are only a few items in the middle. One is the trick transmission lever, which is a circle. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, and push the middle for manual mode. There's also the cool engine start stop button. And between the seats, there's just four switches. The axle lifter, suspension comfort mode, traction control off, and the hazard lights. Now, if you're wondering why it's so tight in here, there are two reasons for it. Number one is to save weight. You don't want some huge cabin with all the interior materials adding weight to the car. Number two is for aero. You see, pulling the interior so tight allowed them to put in the flying buttresses. Yes, that's right, the flying buttresses. One of the most unique design features of this car is the fact that there's a giant hole in the rear three quarters, and it's so big that you can see me. <laughs> Another one of my favorite Ford GT quirks is the adjustable pedals. This thing has adjustable pedals, but not with the press of some electronic button like a modern luxury car. Instead, this thing is old school. You pull a little loop located in the driver's footwell, and then the pedals adjust. You can move them with your feet based on exactly where you want them to be. It's pretty cool. Now, I've already shown you the controls in the center console, and aside from those, there's only a few others that aren't controlled right here on the steering wheel. One is Ford's latest sync system, which is in the middle of the Ford GT, unless you get the competition package, which includes no screen there to save weight. The other are the climate controls. These things are not modern. There's no screen. There's no cool slider. They're just dials. This car is back to basics. Another cool Ford GT feature, as I've already shown you, the door opens with the push of an electronic button, but what happens if the battery dies or the button fails? Well, Ford thought of that. There's a redundancy. It's a little nylon strap located on the B pillar, and it has a little picture of a door on it. Pull it, and the door opens mechanically. One other amazing detail of the Ford GT's interior, you'll notice the dashboard is covered in carbon fiber. That's not fake carbon fiber, and it's not there for looks. This car is a carbon fiber tub, and the dashboard is a structural component of this car. In fact, the little holes on the ends for the climate control vents that stick in the doors are actually a part of the carbon fiber mold for this car. There's no fake carbon in this thing. Now, on the outside, one of the most interesting things is the placement of the fuel door. Because of the whole flying buttress situation, they couldn't really place the fuel door out here, so instead they put it in here. You push it, it opens. Pretty simple. The problem is when you're filling it up, there's a lot of car here for the gas to drip on after you stop pumping. It could get kind of annoying. But back to those flying buttresses, which are about more than just style. They have an aerodynamic function and a function you probably didn't even realize. Air comes into that giant intake on the side, and then there are giant air pathways within those flying buttresses that bring cool air into the engine. They're actually functional. Now, you probably already knew about the flying buttresses, but did you know that they're not the only hole in this car? Check it out. You see this hole right here? When you open the door, you can see it a lot clearer. In fact, there's a giant air management system with a big air channel that sends air from the front of the car all the way through behind the wheel for improved aerodynamics and downforce. Another really cool Ford GT feature is the hole in the middle of the brake lights. Now, I've shown you how all this air gets into the engine, in part through the flying buttresses and the air channels, so you're wondering, well, how does it get out? That's right, through the hole in the center of the brake lights. That's pretty cool. Now, one of the Ford GT's cool party tricks you'll be able to show people when you see one at Cars and Coffee comes in this panel right here. You might think this is just a regular little black panel, but actually it has one of the coolest features. They've hidden a little lock and unlock icon. When you press the button, it shows whether the doors are locked or unlocked. Press the button for unlock, and the icon shows up that shows that it's unlocked. Press the button for lock, and the icon shows up that it's locked, only for a second. They put it here because that's where the position indicator is on the race car. It shows whether it's in first, second, third, what lap, etc. And now for the road car, there's a little lock-unlock -lock icon. Now, let's talk about storage for a second. The only exterior storage bit in this car is back here, where the trunk is under the same panel as the engine. To access it, you press the little trunk button twice on the key fob, and it pops open, or you push a little button inside the car next to the steering wheel. Now, you remember how in the old Ford GT, the entire rear lifted up, and you could see everything, and the tires, and it was really cool? Well, not so in this car. It's a much smaller area. And speaking of small, the rear storage area is absolutely minuscule. If you're going anywhere in this car, I think your best friend will be FedEx. I have to admit though, even though this car has only a 3.5 liter V6, that EcoBoost V6 looks pretty cool back there. Now the old Ford GT had a little storage compartment up front, not so in this car. To access the front area, you pull a little latch in the driver footwell, open it up and you'll find all that's in here is just some fluids. You won't be able to put anything up front. What about storage inside the car? It's sparse. 
really sparse. There's none behind the seats. And the only storage I could really find is this little pouch under the driver's seat and this small area behind the kick plate in the passenger footwell. Another amazing feature about this car, I already showed you track mode and VMAX mode and how you can switch to them and what happens on the gauge cluster when you do it. But the really cool thing about those two modes is that when you switch into track mode or VMAX mode, the car lowers by two whole inches entirely. The whole car goes down so that it has just 2.75 inches of ground clearance. That's amazingly low. Think of it this way. When a Ford GT is in track mode, a Dodge Viper has double the ground clearance. But the most amazing part is how how fast it lowers and raises itself. Take note, I haven't sped up this footage at all. Now, it'd be impossible to look at this car and not notice the giant wing. And indeed, it is a giant wing, but it's not always in this position. In fact, the wing goes up and down based on what mode you're in and all that. One of the more interesting things about the wing, though, is that it actually changes shape when it goes up. When it's down, it's in its most slippery shape, and when it's up, there's a little lip here to provide extra downforce. Here's another cool 4GT feature you'll never know unless you know. Hidden inside the A-pillar in the roof and back here, there is an official race certified roll cage. In other words, if you took this car to a racetrack or an autocross or drag strip, you wouldn't have to put in a roll cage in order to run. Instead, there's already one built in to the pillars in the roof. So that's all the cool features and the strange quirks and the interesting new technology of the Ford GT. And oh boy, was that a lot to cover. But now it's time for the most important part, at least to me. I'm gonna take it out on the road and find out how it drives. All right, time to drive the new Ford GT. This is a very exciting moment. The first thing you realize is the sound is just fantastic. It may not be a V8, but it sounds a lot better than a V6 that shares the same block from the Ford F-150. The transmission is quite quick, even in normal mode. Handling is just next level precise. On the level of every exotic car I've ever driven, the craziest stuff, Ferrari, Lamborghini, oh my God, it's so fast. It feels race car fast. I am blown away by this, the precision of this handling. Oh my God, that's insane. Visibility is really surprisingly good. That mirror, I can see a lot in that mirror. That mirror is pretty good too. Uh, in back, I do pretty well. The, the window is pretty small, but I can see a lot of stuff. I'm kind of surprised actually. I love that the steering wheel is uh, not a circle. It really feels like a racing car steering wheel. That sound right behind you is just crazy. It's a great noise. Really, really great. All right, I've shifted into sport mode. You can instantly tell that the throttle response is quicker. The sound also seems a little bit better. Oh, those downshifts are so fast. That sounds, that sounds like an exotic supercar. Now in sport mode, the handling, this thing is truly feels like it's on rails. I have not driven something that handles this well ever. The sound is just amazing. Oh, <laughs> that sounds so good. It is impossible to believe this is a V6. I've never driven anything that feels this precise and this glued to the road as this car. This is unbelievable. I love this thing. This is amazing. But of course, I better love it. It's a half million dollars. Now I'm going to I'm going to put it in park cuz in order to get to track mode, you got to be in park. Now we're down. Now oh man, you can tell it's lower. I, I wasn't looking up. You can just tell it's lower. Now the wing is up now, and boy, there goes my visibility that I was just saying is pretty good. Oh, the sound is just dramatically improved. It just feels so much bigger. It feels like I'm, it feels like I'm driving sport mode in a tunnel. See the camera's moving around a lot more. It is definitely a harsher ride. You're closer to the ground. The suspension is stiffer in track mode. I'm gonna floor it very briefly. One of my pet peeves is that the paddles move with the steering wheel. They really ought to stay put. When I'm in a corner and I'm going for the paddle, it's somewhere up there. I don't know, it's annoying. I'm just blown away by the steering. I'm going 50. I don't think I've ever felt so confident in a car before. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna floor it here real quick. Just kinda see what happens, see how it goes. Amazing, truly, truly amazing. 
I cannot believe this car is really special. This thing is world class. It is very impressive. I am blown away. Driving this thing on the road is an interesting experience. This is Carl. Carl has the 05 Ford GT I showed you earlier. We're gonna be hearing more from him in my comparison video, which you'll also see. The transmission is just so smooth. It's smooth even on the road. Uh, it was smooth on the track before. Now, I'm driving on a normal street here, uh, and it feels like a fairly normal experience with the exception that we're really, really low. It is a little loud, there's no question about that. It's a little bit louder than uh, a lot of the exotic cars that are, even kind of at lower RPMs, it's, it's got more of a noise to it. There's no question about that. The thing about this car also is it's just very cool to drive. I love the interior of this car. I think the interior is awesome. I think this gauge, center gauge screen, I've driven all these supercars, I think this is the best one I've seen. I love how much it changes. They've really thought through what needs to be at the forefront and what you need to be looking at when you're in each different mode. It isn't cheap, it's just kind of basic, and that's what you're looking for with a, with a car like this. Every material you see in this car that looks like carbon fiber is yeah. there for function. Yep. It's there to make sure that the car is as light as possible and not to make the car look cool. Yep. It ends up making the car look pretty right, cool. Right, right. But that's a side effect of making the car functional. functionally right. You have to realize, though, that this is not a touring car. You can buy a 488, California, whatever. They, they put a lot of effort in, into stitching quality and, and choose which stitching you want and which leather you want and which... This isn't one of those cars. This car is actually going to be designed for people who really want to use it for performance purposes. It is just massively fast. Just crazy. I mean, it certainly feels faster than your car. Do you agree? Yeah. Part of it is that part of it is the gear changes are just so instantaneous. Yeah. yeah. But have you seen what happens when the rear wing retracts? No. So if you get up to a certain speed, the wing goes up. And when you get down to a certain speed, it drops again. Yeah, that's right. That's and it drops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. So I mean, that's what that was. Loud. The car didn't just raise up. It was just the wing the that wing, was doing. It okay. Clunk. Again, it's a race car. So when it's time to put the wing down, it puts the wing down. It doesn't gently set the wing down right. so that it doesn't upset right. you. It right. puts the wing down. Right. Oh, God, this is just an amazing car. It really, really is. It's 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 everything you'd hope that a car at this price point would be. Right. This car, I drove the Aventador SV, which is also a half million dollars. This car makes that thing look uh, agrarian. I mean, this car is so much more precise, and it's just on a completely different level. It really feels like it is. So there's your most thorough look yet at the new Ford GT. Don't forget to click the link below for my column about the GT on autotrader.com slash oversteer. And don't forget to watch my comparison video between the new Ford GT and the old one. Oh. I gotta buckle up, that's what that is. It's the buckle chime, because the regular belt isn't buckled in. That's so funny. So now I got two groups of seat belts on. I'm really safe today.